Hi, in this video, we want to take a look at loading SAS 7 BDAT files into Python. All right, a SAS 7 BDAT file is a special type of file that is specific to the SAS programming language. So uh, what we want to do, we want to treat it much like we do the flat files, like we do with the CSV or tab delimited files. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set up my working directory for my project. And I'm pressing F9 on my machine to execute these. F9, F9. And I always double check to make sure that what I do went through. Now, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna load pandas into Python. Now, I'm gonna load my data set in. All right, so what function am I using? Well, it's gonna be from pandas. Remember the PD is the standard abbreviation for pandas. And then I'm gonna go read underscore SAS. So if I wanna read a SAS file, I go read underscore SAS. And then the file path is in my input folder, airline.sas7bdat. It's an F9, all right. All right, now I wanna to check to make sure that loaded correctly. All right, so there's the head of the data, there's the first five rows. There's the tail of the data, the last five rows. So we can see that there are 32 rows of data in here. All right, so I can see that I've got year, I've got numeric, 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 and numeric. Oh, okay, so let's go ahead and let's look at the correlation between these. Now, I don't know what the, the, what's in this data set. Honestly, I just downloaded from the internet. I'm like, hey, you know, download SAS 7B that file. I found this, downloaded it, boom, I've got it. So here, I've got the correlation. And we can see that there's some pretty strong correlations going on. Strong correlation between Y and year. Pretty strong correlation between L and year. All right, so probably gonna be a pretty good correlation between Y and L, let's check that out. Yep, there is. All right, so how do I read a correlation matrix? So, you know, I've got the first variable and here's the correlation with year between year and Y, year and W, year and R, year and L, year and K. Now you'll notice that if I go down this way, I get exactly the same values. So, you know, the correlation with year, the uh, correlation of year with Y is the same as the correlation of Y with year. All right. So this is what's called a symmetric matrix, by the way. All right, so now, now I got this data, let's go ahead and just make a quick scatter plot because scatter plots are really useful when I have multivariate data. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to load the matplotlib pyplot as plt. This is the standard abbreviation for this. I'm pressing F9 on my machine. All right, so now the, I've loaded the package. All the functions in here are now available in my Python session. Now let's make a scatter plot. Align everything. All right, in my scatter plot, first and foremost, my independent variable is year, so that goes along x. My dependent variable, I chose to be y, and so that goes along with y, y and y. Uh -huh. And then for color, color is represented by c in the scatter function. So I'm gonna make it so that the color corresponds to the value of l. All right, that's pretty interesting. Now, another one I could do, I could put down an s for size, if I wanna make them bigger or smaller. Now, something that's kind of funny about this, if I do this right now, Nothing's actually gonna happen, this is old. I did it when I was uh, writing my code, making sure that the code worked. Uh, this is from that. We noticed that nothing actually happened when I ran this code. All right, what I have to do if I wanna see it, I have to do a, a plt.show. And all right, so let's do this. Take a look at what happens if we take this code. 
want to demonstrate for something for you. Get rid of the labels. Get rid of this. So it's more similar to the default. You'll notice that I don't have an X label or a Y label or a title. This is what it will look like if I did not uh, have these commands at all. Normally, I have so uh, you have to go through and manually put these in. So what I do is I say kind of like the first layer is going to be the first thing I call for my plot, and then the next layer. So the first one is the scatter plot. Then the title goes on top of that. So you got to think of it as I've got the scatter plot, title, X label, Y label, and they stack on top of these of each other. If one, if, if some aspect of the plot overlaps, the last one is what goes on top. And then, however that looks, when I hit the uh, plt.show command, it's gonna show whatever is built up so far. So now let's go through and let's do this again. So I'm gonna take, first layer is gonna be the scatter plot, second one's gonna be the title. So remember, when I make a plot, I always want a descriptive title to tell my user what it is they're looking at. And then I want to put in the year. I want to put in uh, the Y label as Y and then PLT show. Let's see what happens. All right, boom, we've got it. All right, now, one thing that I want you to notice is that I've actually got three variables going on. I've got year, I've got Y, and I've also got L. L corresponds to the color. This is a nice way to be able to visualize three different variables in one plot. So if there, if I suspect that there's a relationship between a, you know, with a third variable that's involved, I can go ahead and include that for the color or the size. Now, if you're going to do that, my advice to you is to stop at three variables. One thing I could also do, I could change the plot color by another variable, sorry, the plot type. So like have a triangles and squares and, and hexagons and stuff like that for another variable. And I can also go by size with another. I find that that's too much. Stop at three variables when you do your scatter plot. It just makes it confusing. It makes it so that the, the reader spends more time trying to figure out what you did than, uh, than understanding what's going on. So I think this is pretty good. Uh, one thing we could do to improve it would be to put a legend to indicate the value of L with each color, but we're gonna leave that for another day. I hope you have enjoyed this video and take care.